Hello friends, now in this uh, second part of the extrusion technology lecture, we will study about the effect of various extrusion process parameters on the material characteristics as well as product characteristics and also we will take up a few case studies where some of the products have been developed using extrusion technology particularly in my laboratory. So, just to refresh your memories, we have seen in the part 1 of this topic lecture part 1 that is extrusion is a thermomechanical process in which heat transfer, mass transfer, pressure changes and shear are combined to produce effects such as cooking, sterilization, drying, melting, texturization, puffing, mixing and kneading, farming etcetera. So, basically so many things this type of effects we can get right in the product by having a proper combinations of these characteristics of the material, characteristics of the extruder process uh, variables and system variables etcetera. Okay. So, uh, again a specially designed die is used to shape the product such as the form of pasta, noodle, rice analogs etcetera variety of products in the variety of shapes and sizes are produced using this technology. Regarding factor affecting the extrusion process, as I told you that is the combination of the process parameters by having appropriate combination of the process parameters, we can produce a product of desired characteristics in as well as we can get that desired system parameters to get the desired characteristics in the product. So, the important extrusion process parameters includes barrel temperature, die head temperature, extruder screw speed and feed moisture content. The product characteristics include physicochemical properties, functional properties, textural characteristics and cooking characteristics. These the process parameter etcetera they influence the system parameters that is the, and what are the extrusion system parameters? They are the torque, die pressure, product temperature, a specific mechanical energy and so. Just in the earlier part of the lecture also we saw here also you can say that is in this picture you can see here this is the feeding zone, this is the transition zone and this is the metering zone. The feeding zone is used for conveying the solid in the transition zone compaction, mixing and softening of the material takes place whereas, in the metering zone there is a melting, pressurizing and pumping of the melt to the die. So, these presses so obviously, that is one then the die in there is a cutter assembly which gives ok, which cuts the product into the desired size and desired say desired size ok. So, this is a these parameters when you change different characteristics like extrusion heating and melting there is a the heat is supplied by the heater as you in which are provided the along with the barrel in the extruder you can see that is there is a some extruder they have three or four heating section like heater 1, heater 2 and heater 3 there are three heating zones here. Okay. So, these through a, this heater the heat is applied also the heat is generated due to friction inside the screw barrel with inside the barrel. Okay. And then material is compacted 
as the screw channel depth reduces and the material flow is taking place in this direction in this case. Okay. So, the extruder screw actually mixes the material and converts it into a viscoelastic melt particularly towards the end of the die and then when it passes through the die because of this uh, flexible nature and because of this characteristics it takes the shape of the die and when it comes out of the die inside the die pressure and temperature are maintained. So, because of the pressure gradient because of the temperature gradient material either in expands or compacts. So, this is the mechanism how these different products are characteristics for. So, how let us see how this if these uh, conditions are varied like for example, how that is the if the barrel temperature is increases that is the product temperature, water absorption index, expansion and color change. This is likely to increase whereas, the torque, die pressure, specific mechanical energy they are likely to decrease with the increase in the barrel temperature. As far as the feed moisture is concerned, if the feed moisture is high, if it increases the density will be more water absorption index will be more the change in the color torque die pressure and a specific mechanical energy will be less. The density water absorption index uh, torque and die pressure increases with increase in the feed rate and change in the color and water absorption index decreases with the increase in the feed rate. So, accordingly one should appropriately maintain the barrel temperature, the feed moisture and the feed rate to get the desired system parameter and ultimately desired product characteristics. There are different types of uh, raw materials used in the extrusion process and they have different functions to play inside the extrusion actually in final shaping the product characteristics. For example, there are certain ingredients which are used as a structure forming material like for example, maize, wheat, rice, potato, oats etcetera. So, they are used to provide the finally the desired structure of the material and depending upon the size of the granules present in this depending upon the type and amount of the starch, the protein and lipid system etcetera all these present in that these materials give the are they give different characteristics to the material. For example, maize here it has a medium size granules, it has average protein level and it has a definite flavor and yellow color. So, the it imparts a good flavor and good color in the extruded product and also because of its uh, uh, arrangements etcetera of the components uh, granular size granular size etcetera it expands well. Similarly, wheat flour also it uh, expands well because of its uh, starch and protein characteristics rice flour it has a small tightly packed starch granules it slowly hydrates and gets starch gets gelatinized during the processing it has average protein levels and it, has, it gives bland flavor and white color so because of these differences or these characteristics material it provides accordingly desired characteristics uh, into the structure structure forming action in the tudor product and also the it results into a fully well expanded products potato on the other hand, it has large granules, high starch level, it also has definite flavor, it is gold to light brown color and it the starch characteristics of the potato also results in well or good expansion, but the material becomes sticky. So, you can say that it is a excellent binder, this can be used for binding purposes, oats they contain large fiber and highest content of lysine as compared to other cereals 
etcetera. The other type of material they can be used as a fillers that is the fillers are most pro, uh, frequently protein fractions of oil seeds and the cereal grains which are added to the main ingredient that we discussed in the last slide. And these fillers in fact, they improve the flexibility of the dough after hydration during mass plasticization inside the extruder. They reduce the swelling of starch during the mass forcing through the dye and also they reduce the size of air bubbles during the expansion of the extrudate thereby influencing the shape of the final products. So, these are the functions of the different fillers. The plasticizers they are in an extrusion cooked mixture normally water, oil, fires and emulsifiers they are used that they serve as the functions of plasticizers. They influence the flow of the material inside the extruder, they reduce the degradation of the starch and they positively affect the quality and nutritional value of the product. The other type of the material ingredients can be used hydrocolloids like they are used for providing thickeners, thickening effect, stabilization and gelling effects for the improvement of the physical characteristics and textural properties of the end product. These hydrocolloids they modify texture of the starch based food products as well as they in influence the melting characteristics, gelatinization, fragmentation and retrogradation processes. Hydrocolloids improve the thermostability and provide lubrication during the extrusion process. The emulsifiers are also frequently used. In fact, the emulsifiers are the lipid fractions with higher melting temperature. They are used by the manufacturer in the extruded product as lubricants. They facilitate shear and formation of uniform surface structure. They protect processed mass against stickiness and thus making further treatment easier. The most commonly used emulsifiers in the products are in the extrusion technology are the soya lecithin and mono and diglyceride esters. Apart from this, sometime depending upon the requirement of the product, some raising agents can also be used such as to provide aeration of the mass and help to obtain the typical crispy and porous structure of the extrudates. For example, the baking powder etcetera sometime they can be used and finally, and you can say last but not the least important are the taste components and fact the material added to improve the taste like salt, sugar, sometimes some spice etcetera are added to provide desired taste into the extruded product. And let us see effect of extrusion processing parameters, extrusion processing conditions on the material characteristics to start with the starch we will see because starch is one major component in the structure forming action which influences the product texture and other characteristics. So, during the extrusion processing the starch granules in presence of water undergo the process of gelatinization and the, if the extrusion conditions are severe which you can see here in this there is the raw rice granules how the starch looks like then starch gelatinizes is with the water and heat which is there inside the screw barrel etcetera and depending upon the conditions of temperature and pressure present inside the barrel this starch granules gets damaged by the shear forces etcetera and finally, it can be broken down it can be dry hydrolysis may take place it may get converted into dextinization and in fact, this dextinized starch sometimes gives the sweeter taste because these dextins are 
intermediate between uh, glucose and the starch molecule. They have the intermediate characteristics that is less sweeter than glucose, but better sweeter, more sweeter than the starch. Okay. So, these uh, high shear conditions are necessary in fact, to maximize the conversion of starch into glucose. So, that the material becomes it gets the, the better sensory characteristics and other components even sometimes this glucose etcetera they also in some products that is they contribute to the browning of the brown color development and the extruded product which also is a in those products are in some products is a desirable. So, the loss of crystallinity can also be observed in the extruded product and this is basically because of the that is the gelatinization effect. Okay, the gelatinized starch, cellular protein and the cellulogic material sector which might be there in the uh, raw material, they are one complex which decisively influence the product expansion ability after forcing them through the dye. Okay, so, these that is the gelatinized starch, the protein that is in which form it is denatured or in the native and to the uh, what the extent it has been denatured to the what extent it has been denatured gelatinized the starch has been gelatinized protein has been denatured and the other cellulogic material etcetera. So, all this will actually influence to a great extent the expandability and other characteristics in the final product. So, the starch in fact is very very important ingredient as far as the extruded products and their characteristics are concerned. They are used for density control, they are used to provide strength in the material actually certain modified starches can increase the strength and reduce breakage in the expanded products. They might result in the self life improvement, moisture uptake, they improve the flavor of the materials, even water holding capacity, fat binding capacity all these properties, functionality and other things of the material is uh, provided and adequately uh, by having a proper amount and quantity and type of the starch by controlling the conditions to control the starch gelatinization, retrogradation etcetera, we can uh, get desired characteristics. Okay. So, another important component most of the grains etcetera which are used for extrusion there is a structure forming action they also along with the starch they have the protein. So, the extrusion process conditions they also have the important influence on the protein characteristics and this in, in turn influences the uh, product characteristics like for example, native proteins are denatured during extrusion process. The forces in fact, in the native protein that is the tertiary structure, secondary structure, quaternary structure they are held up held in its uh, native form by appropriate uh, interactions and interactive bonded may be covalent linkages, sulphide linkage and all those things. So, all these forces in fact, which are responsible to keep the structure in its native form they are weakened by a combination of increased temperature and shear within the extruder barrel. So, the individual protein molecule unfold and align themselves with the flow of the material towards the dye. The exposure of hydrophobic residues such as phenyl alanine and tyrosine they reduce the solubility of the extruded protein in aqueous systems. So, here you can see in this uh, figure that is this is the native protein that is they get uh, that is the open and in the flow is there native structure is disturbed all right. And even what will happen that is the if there is a this uh, hydrophobic R group if they are 
uh, extended which are normally there is the how they are extended toward the native structure if they are all on the surface then protein has good solubility and these hydro like our group if they are maybe do, uh, as a result of uh, this denaturation they may go toward the interior of the follicle and they may get disturbed. So, the protein solubility may get disturbed accordingly the extruded product may have be less soluble than compared to the because of these changes in the material protein characteristics. As far as the effect of lipids on extrusion processing uh, that is, is concerned that is extrusion of high fat materials is generally not advisable. Especially in the case of expanded product if you want that is the material should expand after extrusion the fat content should be kept low as low as possible. For example, if the lipid level is more than 5 to 6 percent it impair extruder performance and the presence of lipid in the raw material causes decrease in the torque uh, because the lipid reduces slip within the barrel. Okay. There is poor expansion of the product because in a sufficient pressure is developed. Lipid is released from the cells owing to the high temperature and physical disruption of the plant cell walls. So, this also increased fat content it may have some difficulties or it may influence the product characteristics. Low lipid level is less than 5 percent uh, in the in material facilitate steady extrusion and improve the texture. The extrusion processes can prevent free fatty acid release by denaturing the hydrolytic enzyme. So, that is the material can become there is the uh, hydrolytic rancidity etcetera in the material that is in the extruded product can be prevented or can be less in compared to the normal products because the heat generated inside the pressure inside the extruder barrel can cause the hydrolytic enzymes. So, therefore, the hydrolytic rancidity can be prevented. The effect of uh, extrusion processing on vitamins in fact, uh, the retention of vitamins in extrusion cooking decreases with uh, increasing temperature, screw speed and specific energy output. It also decreases with decreasing moisture, feed rate and dry diameter that is if the dry diameter is decreases then in this the extent uh, vitamins retention will decrease. Okay. Then depending on the vitamin concerned considerable degradation can occur especially in the product with high sensory appeal. So, the temperature and pressure in the, the barrel they may result into the destruction of the vitamins. So, the care should be taken to have minimum change or minimum destruction of the vitamins. Okay. So, what can be done? There is the uses of a specific vitamin compounds or forms of application with improved stability. There is those vitamins which have better stability, they should be used, they can be used, and sometimes addition of extra amounts of vitamins maybe vitamin mineral premix can be used which can be added into the product to make up the losses and this addition can be done during extrusion or storage stage or even it can be applied post extrusion either by dusting, enrobing, spraying, coating or filling together with other ingredients that can be applied. So, by this one can we can maintain desired quantity of vitamins. Similarly, the extrusion process its effects are minerals if you can say generally minerals are more heat stable and therefore, they are not likely to become lost in the steam distillate at the dye. However, extrusion can improve the absorption of minerals by 
reducing other factors that inhibit absorption. Mineral absorption could be affected by the phytate, polyphenols like tannins etcetera and fiber components. So, cellulose, lignin and some hellulose, uh, hemicellulose affect the mobility of these minerals in the gastrointestinal tract and interfere with the absorption, their absorption process. So, while tannins might be insoluble complexes might form insoluble complexes with divalent ions in the gastrointestinal tract. So, the extrusion hydrolyzes the phytates, decomposes the polyphenols, reorganizes the fiber components and changes chelating properties and this explains the higher availability of the mineral after extrusion processing that is the particularly after high temperature extrusion. So, the bio the availability of the mineral in our system it might be more in the extruded product extrusion process improves the availability absorption characteristics of the minerals. And the very important thing that is acrylamide formation that is acrylamides normally it is a group 2 a carcinogen and it is found uh, common in foods which are prepared or which are exposed to a temperature of more than 120 degree Celsius or so. For example, in the potato chips, expanded RT snacks etcetera and the here the causative agents are mainly amino acid which contribute to the acrylamide formation is asparagin and especially in the presence of reducing sugars like glucose etcetera this asparagin reacts with the glucose and the sugar amine uh, acrylamide is formed. So, during extrusion the feed and product moisture content, process temperature and resultant energy inputs are relevant parameters for the acrylamide formation and they so they accordingly they can be properly controlled. For example, if the temperature during inside the extrusion barrel etcetera is maintained less than 120 degree Celsius, the formation of extrusion can be either eliminated or can be avoided. Also, the presence of glycine, cysteine and lysine has the significant effects on the decrease in acrylamide content in the fried products. Now, in next uh, few slides I will just like to give you a glimpse of overview of the that is uh, we at our uh, institute in our in my laboratory food chemistry and technology laboratory my students they have worked on several process innovations particularly extrusion process innovations and developed different uh, products which you can see here in this slide like fortified rice kernels ok energy uh, essential amino acid balance uh, nutridal that is expanded ready to eat uh, snacks maybe from the millets etcetera sweet potato extrudates chlorella fortified pasta, fortified rice noodles and so on fortified rice kernel. So, some of these products have been developed in a laboratory using one or the other materials and most of these they are all considered a good healthy products because the process parameters are selected in such a way that is for example, these expanded snacks products this is here by appropriate selection of the process parameters that is a it is a is ready to eat form and it comes out of extruder it becomes in ready to eat form. So, no frying and other things are might be required here. So, maybe these some of these products and their manufacturing technologies we will be taking there is details we will be taking in uh, some lecture classes separately, but today just I will uh, try to give you an overview in the glimpse like for example, fortified rice kernels where these are made by using the broken rice that is the broken rice from the rice mill is taken it is converted into that uh, flour milled into flour all right and where the fortificants are added and these conditioned rice flour added with the fortificant like iron folic acid and vitamin B12 
in the appropriate quantity that is as per the guidelines set by food standards food safety and standards authority of india this is forced through a extruder and uh, that is extruder also is designed and developed indigenously for this purpose and the rice dye has been designed is forced through the dye and you can see here that is we get that is these are the fortified rice kernels that is which are made using this extrusion technology of course here inside that uh, extruder barrel just at the head, dye head we manipulate the condition of temperature pressure in such a way that when material comes out there is a sufficient degree of compression in the products the compaction in the product design expands and this these rice they have the desired characteristics they are resemble to normal rice in their cooking eating and other sensory characteristics and you can see here in this picture that is after cooking it remain retains its shape it doesn't disintegrates similarly another product is that is the essential amino acid balance nutri dal so that is the dal actually it is the split pulses split and it is cooked and eaten cooked with some salt spices etc and eaten and these cooked dals in fact they form a major source or uh, that is the important uh, source for the protein in the people who uh, have are vegetarian who totally depend on the vegetarian so and you know that is the none of the pulses which is produced normally there is a leguminous crops they have all essential amino acid the same so what we have done here in this case that is we have taken the broken of different uh, dal mills or pulse milling industries at these broken using linear programming that is uh, they are you know, appropriately mixed and this uh, this ground and the ground here also we have a designed dye giving the shape so this is forced through the extruder in the desired pressure and temperature conditions and we get the dal shape and after cooking you can see here how so these dals extruded dal and since this uh, we are calling it nutri dal because this contains in the single product is contains essential amino acid all essential amino acids are contained in this and not only the number type of but also their quantity that it is comparable 100 gram of this dal is comparable to 100 grams of egg as far as the amino acid uh, composition essential amino acid composition is concerned the other product is the gluten free pasta here also we have taken some pulse flour that is the chickpea flour and rice flour and they are mixed together a batter is formed mix and conditioned and after this mixing condition and they are fed to the to in the extruder all right and finally it is dried and we get gluten free pasta so since here no heat is here, so the ingredient itself we have taken that is a gluten free but of course the extrusion process conditions etc are particularly mixing and condition uh, conditioning is designed in such a way or optimized in such a way that we get the desired characteristics of the pasta that is it retains its shape it uh, doubles uh, swell double when it is cooked so desired characteristics of the pasta are there in this product the other product is accordingly fortified rice noodle we have the same type of machine that is the, which have fortified uh, rice fortified rice kernel fortified dal nutri dal similarly fortified rice noodle we are taking rice flour we are adding appropriate uh, or desired quantity of the micronutrient iron folic acid vitamin b12 and then mixing and conditioning after mixing and conditioning they are fed to the extruder alert where the appropriate dye is provided or given to give the desired shape shape of the noodle and this noodle also it resembles the commercial products in its sensory 
and other characteristics. So, it is a health noodle as it has been fortified by micronutrients, iron, vitamin B12 and folic acid. So, the other product is the preparation of sweet potato flour. The sweet potato flour preparation using extrusion technology that is here the sweet potato is taken, it is soaked, there is a washed and put into the sliced and then soaked and after soaking it is dried, conditioned and then fed into the extruder and here in the extrusion actually it results in the significant reduction of the trypsin inhibitor and also improvement in the in, pit, in uh, vitro digestibility takes place, in vitro digestibility improvement takes place and finally, we get sweet potato extruders and these sweet potato extruders are further uh, ground into flour. This sweet potato extruded flour that is which has improved digestibility, low complete in inhibition of the trypsin inhibitor uh, activity and other anti nutrients. So, this is a very good ingredient for use in the food products and other such. So, in fact, we have used this uh, uh, extruded uh, this uh, sweet potato flour in the preparation of high energy ready to eat uh, food for malnourished children. The other product you can say that protein and fiber is ready to eat snack foods like there is the we take there is the pea protein which uh, we have taken for the expansion there is the pea protein added with corn flour in appropriate amount and some apple pomace. So, here it is a protein rich material comparatively less starch and this apple fiber rich. So, these are mixed in the appropriate amount and then finally, fed to the extruder in the desired conditions in the extruder barrel and finally, they are uh, material is obtained that is the of desired characteristics they ready to eat expanded snacks. So, in fact, the details of some of this particularly this uh, fortified rice kernel, nutridal, fortified noodles etcetera, we will take up separately in little detail. So, with I hope we have uh, got a good understanding by now about the extrusion technology, different uh, materials which are used for the extrusion or which form a good raw material for the extrusion process, the extrusion system parameters, extrusion process parameters, material characteristics, how they are proper combinations by proper, in, by proper adjustment of these things one can get do and to get in order to get the desired product characteristics. With this I once again thank you for your kind attention.